Hello dear learners, welcome back to my channel. In our previous video, we had spoken about dependency injection, its various ways in which it can be implemented in our code. Also, in that particular session, we had learnt about auto-wiring dependencies, wherein we had learnt the various ways in, we can, in which we can auto-wire the dependency, wherein we, could, we don't need to manually mention the dependency of a particular class on another it can be automatically resolved using the mode that you have used. So, we had seen that there are various modes, no mode, by name, by type, constructor, auto detect. In today's video, we will be talking about all these various modes in detail and see uh, examples in each of this and how it is implemented. Okay. So, uh, let's get started. So, let's take, uh, you know, even before we can start, uh, seeing the various ways in which auto wiring can be implemented. Let's take two sample classes. Let's say one, this is our same example that we have been taking over our previous videos. In case if you have not seen my previous videos, I will share my whole playlist here. So you can uh, check that out and see those videos so that you can understand what the example is all about. So uh, let's say I have this class MRF tire which implements an interface tire. It has one uh, property of it that is type and this is one of the setter methods that says set type and it takes the type as input and stores it in the variable. So, this is one of the classes. This particular class is used inside the car class. So, you can say the car class has dependency on the tire class and there are two ways in which we are implementing this dependency here. One is using either constructor or using the setter. So, we have defined both here because this is just a sample. We will be using it in our uh, future uh, codes. So, that's why we've taken both here. Uh, so, we have a constructor and we have a set. So, just uh, take a minute and look at this particular uh, code and because we are going to use it in our examples ahead. So, just have a look at it. Going further, uh, the first type of auto wiring that we are going to talk about is no auto wiring. Now, no auto wiring here is the default mode of auto wiring. And uh, it means that we are not having any sort of auto wiring. Everything that you need to do is need to be done manually. So, the uh, examples that we had seen in the previous video, you need to use the those, uh, you know, direct ways of implementing auto wiring. So, as I said, this is the default auto wiring mode. It means no auto wiring. So, uh, here you can see that I have mentioned the word auto wire equals to no, but this is not mandatory. You can just skip this whole uh, property here for this particular tag, it automatically means that there is no auto wiring. So, if you don't use this attribute, it means there is no auto wiring. Okay. Going further, if you have no auto wiring, means you will have to manually uh, define your dependencies if you have any. One of the ways is constructor argument as you can see here. The other is through properties. Right. So, you can use one of the two approaches. We had seen these approaches in our previous video. So, you want, you can check those out, okay. So, uh, going ahead, and so as I said, this is the first mode, no auto wiring mode. This is also the default auto wiring mode. We by default have no auto wiring. So, if we want auto wiring, this means that we have to explicitly mention what sort of auto wiring we want. We had seen that in the previous video. Let's go ahead in further detail. So, the first, uh, you know, type that we saw was no. Then we have is by name. Now, this is very interesting. The example that we saw of the class earlier here. So, you can see here in the car class, I have a variable or you can say a property defined with the name tire. Okay. Now, when I say something is auto wired by name means it is enabled based on a particular beam's name. So, in the car class, the name with which I have defined the object of the tire class, that name has to match. Okay. So, Spring loops looks up for this matching beam name in the configuration file. What this configuration file is, we will talk about it in absolute detail in a future video. So, stay tuned for that also. We will be talking about it in detail. So, if a particular beam with that same name is not found in the configuration file, then it raises an error. If it is found, definitely it is in injected as a property uh, in that particular class or as a dependency you can say in that particular class. So, something like this you need to do that you need to say auto wire by name. So, what this will do is this will whatever is the name in the car class defined. So, in the car class we had defined it as tire. It will try to look for a bean with a similar ID. You can see her ID is tire. So, it is trying to now look for a bean in the configuration file with ID tire. If it matches 
it will pick up that particular beam and generate its object and inject it. Correct. But in case, if let's say in the class I would have defined tire 1 and if I had kept the ID here as tire, and if I say auto wire by name, in that case it won't work. In that case it will raise an error. So now because in the configuration file it is not able to find any beam with the same matching ID, it will raise an error. That's what auto wire by name is. It will match the beam object by its name. Okay, that's auto wiring by name. Then you have auto wiring by type. So here rather than name, we are matching the class types. Okay, so in this particular option, it is uh, you know, auto wiring is enabled based on a particular beam's type. It will look for the class type in the configuration file. So now what is what is it trying to do? It is basically trying to look for a beam that matches the type. Okay. So since MRF tires implements the interface tire, we can still have, you know, this will still match. Okay. Because this is an implementation class of the tire interface. So if it finds this one, it will take. Up. Now again, here there is uh, one thing that if it does not found, definitely it will raise an error. But if there are multiple beams with the same type, so here I have defined only one beam with ID tire and class MRF tires. Let's say if I define one more beam here, okay, with let's say ID tire 1 and the same class com.learning.mrf com tires, in that case, this particular type of auto wiring will also, uh, in that situation also it will raise an error. Okay, so again that is one problem. So two problems here that uh, if the you know, beam of same class type is not found, it will raise an error. Second, if there are more than one beam of the same type, also it will raise an error. Two situations in which it will raise an error. Otherwise, if it finds one particular instance of that particular type, it will give you no problem there. So again, here the attribute that you need to use is auto wire equals to by type. Please note the way it is being written. It's very important. And these things are case sensitive. So you need to remember that. Going further, talking about auto wiring by constructor now again this is a very interesting way of auto wiring wherein now we are auto wiring using constructor but there is a little twist in this that of course the auto wiring is applied on the constructor but what the constructor will do is whatever number of parameters that you have in the constructor it will try to find a beam by type so we learned by type here right so what it will do is let's say in our case if you see here Our class constructor has only one argument of type tire. Okay. So what it will do is it will take up this particular constructor and it will try to match or it will try to find a beam of this particular type in the configuration file. So if it finds a beam of that particular type, well and good said, it will, uh, you know, you can say it will inject that particular dependency. But what is mandatory here that if I have multiple arguments also in that case, each uh, you know argument's type has to match so there has to be exactly one beam of each parameter so let's say if i have uh, two arguments now in my constructor one of type tire and let's say the other of type engine my container will try to look for two beams of each type one uh, for type tire so it will try to look for exactly one beam of type tire if it is more than one again it will throw an error also, it will try to look for one beam of type engine. Again, the same uh, same point here also that if there are more than one, it will throw an error. So, if it uh, also if it doesn't find for any of the type, it is going to raise an error. So, it has to find exactly one beam as it is as you can see here that it has to find one beam of the constructor argument type, right? If it is not there, it throws an error. So that is how you know it works. So, if I have to implement by constructor implementation in that case. I have to say auto wire by constructor as you can see here. Okay, so that's auto wiring by constructor. Again, useful in some situations, but could be tricky at times if you have not implemented it correctly. So let's say if you have multiple arguments or if there's a little, uh, you know, issue here or there, it might become a little tricky. So yeah, careful when you're using auto wiring by constructor. Going further, we have auto wiring auto detect. Now this is again one more case wherein it automatically detects which mode to pick up that is by constructor or by type means okay so first it will try to check if there is a valid constructor with all the arguments and if it is present okay so if there is a constructor in the class and whatever constructor that i have uh, e each argument inside that constructor has a valid type of beam in the configuration file so if that's found it works if not if it is found, so as i said if it is found that the constructor mode is chosen if not then it is defined in a beam 
so if the constructor is not found in the bean then in that case it will choose a by type mode so then it will go one by one uh, property by property and it will try to find it okay so that is by type so again for implementing the auto wire auto detect mode you need to say auto detect so as i said the default one was what the default one was no wiring okay or no basically and these are the other modes by type by constructor you know auto detect and uh, you know so on and so forth. so these are the various uh, modes that we have for auto wiring now this is more of an xml way of implementing it in the newer versions we also have the uh, you know annotation mode of implementing it so uh, if you have to implement it using annotations we had seen this in our previous video also that you need to use the auto wired annotation again the auto wired annotation can be used on properties on setters and on constructor so if you have to use this particular way of uh, you know implementation that is an auto wired annotation implementation you need to first configure or you need to first enable the auto wiring uh, you know annotation implementation for that if you have a java based configuration that is if you created a config class and you are configuring through that you need to use the at the rate component scan annotation and you need to provide your base package here if you are using an xml based configuration in that case you need to use the context annotation hyphen config tag in your code so these are two ways in which you can enable again i am repeating these are the two ways in which you can enable auto wiring annotation or an annotation implementation of auto wiring okay once this is enabled there are as i said three ways of implementing it you can either do it through properties you can do it on setters or you can do it through constructor so this first implementation that you see here you can see here i have a property here private tire tire and on top of it i have written at the rate auto wire so this is basically the properties way of implementing it okay then going further we have the you know setter type you can see here now uh, the auto wired annotation is not on top of the property rather it is on top of the setter so it says at the rate auto wired so here it is the setter way of implementing it and finally this is the constructor way of implementing it you can see here i have this constructor car which has this one argument tire and i'm using the at the rate auto wired annotation on top of the constructor again all three are valid ways you can choose uh, based on whatever is convenient to you or whatever suits your requirement and you can implement one of the three ways it's not that this is right this is wrong this is better the other one is not all of them are uh, you know correct or best ways of implementing it you can choose based on what your requirement is or based on how your arguments or how your properties are coming in or how your uh, you know properties are being defined based on that you can choose okay whichever you want of the three so uh, that is it in today's video in our future video we'll be talking about the spring maven dependency in this same video we will also be implementing our first example of spring so we will configure the whole spring maven dependency and then actually write down a program a very basic program of how the whole spring project is created and uh, post that in a future video we will be then talking about more details at the code level what all we have what all we need for a code to be implemented so stay tuned there are a lot of other interesting topics coming in uh, for the whole spring and spring boot series so stay connected uh, you know like my videos if you like my content please subscribe to my channel and uh, support me for this initiative and uh, please comment on my videos you can ask me questions you can give me feedback about my videos you can even uh, you know send some message regarding how you like my videos so please stay connected uh, that's it for today thank you bye bye